Howdy folks and welcome to 50 Nautical Mile Arc. Today we are going to fly into Chicago. We're going to land at Meigs. I actually have Meigs Airport um, modeled in this simulator. So we're starting here at Bridgman Community Air Park. Now what's an air park do you ask? Well if this were modeled and this were um, simulated like real life, there would be a bunch of houses around here. And what an air park is, is you have a neighborhood that surrounds an airfield and then the people in the neighborhood own planes and they use it as their own private runway. Um, there are a lot of these in Minnesota too, nearby where I live actually. Um, but yeah, so this is missing some important elements like houses. There wouldn't be farm fields here. There should be houses here. Anyway, that's where we are. We're going to fly across Lake Michigan then into Chicago. And the reason why I wanted to do this is I wanted to see how the Chicago skyline appears. So in real life, if you were to cross those trees on ground level, you would actually see a little bit of the skyline across the lake on a clear day. And in an airplane, as you approach, you would see the skyline, skyline rise over the horizon. Okay. In the sim, though, it's not going to be that way. It's not going to be that awesome where it rises over the horizon. It'll just start appearing building by building as it renders, and then they're just going to pop out of nowhere. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen, but I wanted to see for myself how this is going to work. Um, when we do get there, I believe I'm ready in the Ted Davis Freeware Chicago, so it's great looking stuff and it's free, but it's going to kill my frame rates. I, if I remember how this is going to work, we're getting about 40 some frames right now because there's nothing here. But we'll probably dip like the 10 frames per second once Chicago pops into view. That's what I'm predicting is going to happen. So I apologize for that. That's just the nature of some of the older freeware and how it's modeled. We know now that um, different types of add-on scenery like the New York skyline actually increases frame rates. It's just modeled completely differently than the older stuff. So... Just that to deal with. Anyway, that's a very long introduction for whatever reason. I guess I'm kind of chatty today. So we are going to fly this in the Carnado Piper Archer 2. I love this plane. I haven't flown in a really long time. So um, let's hop inside here and get started. And we'll see how the skyline appears to us as we get closer. All right, first thing I want to do here. Can I shut the door from here? I think so. There we go. And we do need to remove static elements as well. Oh, let's close the baggage door. There we go. Static elements are gone. I don't know if there's much to talk about. I have talked about this plane at great length a few videos back. So if you just want to search my channel for the Carinado Piper, um, I go over this airplane in quite detail. So there should be a way to hide this thing. There we go. But anyway, it has been a while since I've flown this. So let's see if I can remember my presets. There we go, and if I can um, get this thing started, of course you always want some type of battery. And do we need the fuel pump right away? I can't remember. We don't need that right when we do it anyway. Let's turn on our lights. The steel lighting lights was we're already on the taxiway. These are for your cockpit lighting, I believe. And I think we can just do fuel forward and a little bit of throttle. And I think, oh, we can do prime, I guess. I think this will just start it up. We need a lot of throttle. There we go. And we are started up and ready to go. Oh, I love frame rates when there's nothing around. Nothing around. All right. I'm not going to use any radios. This is completely, completely VFR. I know Chicago really well. You know Chicago really well. Meigs will be pretty obvious when we get there. So we're just going to fly across the lake and see what happens. So without further ado, I think we are ready to get the heck out of here. Let's get some flaps down. Where's my flap indicator? I can't remember. Anyway, here we go. Let's just get out of here. Oh yeah, <laughs> my little side window closed. I had it open. There we go. Just enough runway to get out of here. No gear to bring up or anything.
There's another neighborhood. Bring the rest of the flaps in. Yeah, we'll look around here. So there's the lake. So we're going to cross the lake. And then head to Chicago. We'll go due west into Chicago. So there's west there. I did turn the clouds down a little bit. They're not um, full overcast like I've been flying. See the nice curve of the lake. There's some other airports around here too. And if we were on this beach here, on these beaches, we would be able to see Chicago in real life. On a nice clear day, you can see some of the taller buildings. So you'd stand on the beach there and you'd be able to see. And there is photographic evidence of that, if you don't believe me. I've also seen it for myself. But because it's the sim, we're at the mercy of when the scenery loads. So we're not going to get to see the top of the Hancock Tower or the Sears Tower and then watch it rise for us. We're not going to get that. We're just going to have scenery pop into place. So I'm actually going to trim down a little bit. I don't want to go too high because I don't want the scenery to pop in while it's under our nose and we miss it. I'm having a hard time staying west here. Very easy airplane to fly. Not much going on to worry about. A few cool little things though, like the ashtrays open and things like that. Alright. I don't see anything popping into place yet. Some nice scenery though. I think I have some seating views here. There we go, passenger view. Another passenger view. Actually, this is like the cargo area view. Here's the passenger view. There we go. Anything load yet? Nope. I don't expect it to load till we're pretty much on top of it, to be honest. Turn our landing lights off. Can't remember if I need carb heat or not right now. Since I've never flown a real airplane, things like mixtures and carb heat and everything is not something I'm good at, I'll admit it. Even though those things are modeled most of the time and you can you can take those into account in your flying, and I should at some point. Right, we'll just keep heading west and pick up the speed here. This is going to be a very long flight. Not a whole lot to look at as expected. Let's um, let's have an outside view. All right, here we are outside. Still climbing a little bit, but I'm trimming it to be level here. Some nice water reflections. Right, we're back in the cockpit and um, I was thinking maybe this was land out here. But I don't think so because if you look land looks like this and then if you look over here it looks like there's land there and obviously that's not. So we haven't had land rendered yet. Sure looks like it could be though, but we're still making our way away from Main Shore, Michigan. You see the cloud reflection in the water, that's cool. Alright, just a bunch of 
nothing, so I think I'll check back in with you just before the land pops in. Alright, we are exactly halfway over the lake, and the land just popped in in front of us. You can see off the horizon there. You can see how things popped in. Looks like we may have some buildings popped in on us here. In fact, I'm pretty confident that's the skyline there. Oh, more stuff is rendering. If you look over here, it disappears, see? So. And I'm pretty confident those are our buildings. There we go. They popped in when we could barely see them. So I am quite pleased with this, actually. Um, it's actually more impressive than I thought it would be. So I'm very happy with how this rendered. I've had this flight on my to-do list for a very, very long time, and I'm glad I'm finally doing it. Um, this is really cool. This is really, really cool. So I guess this would simulate like a somewhat hazy day then in real life where you can't see across from the other side, but things just kind of pop into view. I'm all about the full immersion experience when it comes to the flight sim. So this is kind of nice and pleasant here. In real life, you can fly the shoreline VFR and avoid class Bravo airspace, although I forget the altitude. I think you're supposed to fly at, oh gosh, is it 3,500 at or below? I can't remember exactly, but it is possible. It is legal. People do it all the time. Of course, you want to request flight following so that you're not just some random VFR aircraft. You need to talk to the tower anyway to enter Bravo airspace. So I guess we'd be a little high for real life if that's what it is, but um, we're still getting there. We'll get a little closer and then we'll kind of do a flyby of the skyline and then land at Meigs. set up to do a shoreline flyby. I'll lose altitude here well in a minute once you get a little closer to shore, but there's the skyline. You can't mistake it. Alright, there's a skyline there, so we're going to start coming down a little bit. So we can say about 3,500 or so. Mean sea level. We can make out Navy Pier from here. Hancock Tower, Aeon Tower, I believe. Sears Tower, of course. Not exactly sure which buildings are modeled in this scenery. But we'll find out when we get there. Okay, I think we can turn towards shore now. Alright, coming up on 3500 feet, so we're going to put the power back in but trim down to keep our speed up. I don't want to lose speed, but I don't want to gain altitude either. Level off about 3,000. And there's the skyline in view. There's 3,000 feet. Navy Pier, 
You see the stadiums, there's Miggs Field. Miggs Field Pine finally popped into view here. Kind of need to look over the greater Chicago area. Up towards Milwaukee. You obviously can't see Milwaukee from here. Nice reflection of the buildings in the water. Again, I have my water reflections cranked full blast and actually better frame rates than when I turn them down. I think it does a use this different type of rendering I think and whatever whatever I've got in my rig here seems to render that better so four reflections alright we're about to make our turn to the south we'll fly over Miggs Field and then we'll try to lose altitude quickly and land that Hancock Tower has some really bright red antenna looks like from here All right. Shoreline Drive looks like it's modeled accurately. I don't know if that's luck of the autogen or if that's actually Ted's work. You can see, like all this park area, there's no autogen in the way or anything. Actually, my frame rates don't seem to be too bad. Maybe I'm high enough yet, I'm not sure, but I swear in the past. My sim was just slaughtered flying through here. We'll fly right over Navy Pier. And right over the airfield. Actually, we'll go a little left of the airfield so we can see it. At this height, I don't think we would be affecting anybody flying in the MiGs, although MiGs doesn't exist anymore, so people who fly this VFR corridor in real life don't have to worry about that they just have to stay below class Bravo for the airports now my frame rates are starting to suffer a little bit Chicago Herald there Got two whoops back there sorry Then midway, you can see the pappy for the runways. There we go. There's a better view of over here. There's the Adventures in Babysitting building. Millennial Park obviously has a lot more going on for it nowadays. I, this actually may have been modeled before Millennial Millennium Park. Millennial Park, Millennium Park was built. I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Miggs Field coming up, the stadiums. Planetarium. This is now an amphitheater for music, for rock concerts, Shed Aquarium, Museum Natural History. So yeah, so I actually went to a recent concert here. So I parked at the stadium and then we had a free shuttle back here to the amphitheater.
That MIGS scenery is really, really good for freeware too, by the way. The Chicago is as well, but that MIGS especially. For freeware, I'm happy with it. Very happy with it. Can't complain about free. Another look at Chicago here before we come in for our landing. Looking nice. I guess I could have had a more interesting time of day, like a sunrise or something, but that's okay. Navy Pier looks good from here. Alright, let's join traffic, come down, and try to land this thing. Give myself enough space here. Head about east. I don't think I need that much space. <laughs> Let's finish this turn. Aim for Navy Pier and use that. So nice skyline view. Slow down a little bit though. Slow down a lot, I guess. There's a hand tower. The new aqua tower sits right over here. It's not modeled, it didn't exist when this was made. Read some flaps in yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at whackers there. There's supposed to be three of those, they only built one. Second set of flaps. I want to slow down, but I don't want to drop altitude yet. For wondering what it says on top of that building, it says X plane. So the magnificent mile would be there. Are there three flaps in this? There are three flaps in this. Millennium Park. Adventures and babysitting building. Those of you who grew up in the 80s will know what I'm talking about. Even if you're not a girl, as long as you had sisters, you know what that movie is. I think they're going to do a remake of that. Oops, I was focused on the planetarium for a second time. Alright, let's kill some more speed here. I want to keep looking out the window. But I shouldn't, I know. 
make that mistake all the time. I was going to say that I have a feeling approaches would have been from the south all the time, but then again, none of this would be here right now if if Meek still existed. So never mind, there wouldn't be a marina. Let well, me if there's a marina back then. I don't think the Blindaterium existed back then, though, when there's an airport here. I don't think that would have worked so well. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright. Power to idle. There we go. There you go. Land it right at stall speed. Don't even need brakes. Flaps in. A little bit of brakes there. That open. I like how the Carinado aircraft that the sounds change when you open up windows and things. Uh, where are we going here? Well, those are bigger aircrafts. It's just going to park over there. Let's turn these landing lights off first, though, so we don't get our friends upset. I just want to have a look at this airport while we taxi. Looks like some business class jets there. Well, let's just park right in here, I guess. This is kind of like where exactly the amphitheater is when you're looking at the skyline, that's what it looks like. Let's spin around and stop, not quite that suddenly, but there you go. Set the parking brake and have a look at some replays. I think we'll start with a nice long passenger view this time. Just enjoy the sights and the sounds. So that's what photo real scenery used to look like near the beginning. Not a huge fan of it, but um, again, from the air, it looks fantastic. Looks like some 3D grass there. The runway looks really nice from photo real though. Cool. Let's check an outside view. And here we go with uh, skyline in the background. There's this, the red, used to be the CNA building, I don't know what it's called now. But over the parking lot with the amphitheater. Green in the background. And there we go. Cool. Let's see what the runway view looks like. There we go, coming in. 3D grass. More 3D grass. I love it. Man, that runway looks huge compared to that little plane. Figured we'd do a tower view. Hand placed trees. Yeah, there we go. Get the lake in the background. Flaps coming up. Cool, let's go back to real time. Alright, so here we are. Let's um let's kill our fuel and we'll turn off the ignition. I think we'll turn off the ignition. Whoops, that's too far, isn't it? 
Well, that's right. Okay, there we go. All right, turn off the rest of our lights. Kill our batteries. We don't have to listen to that sound anymore. Open up our door. And can we get baggage from the outside? Nope, we need to use our options to do that. Baggage door, static elements. And there you go, folks. There we have it. It's a freeware airport in freeware city. And I really, really enjoyed how the skyline came into view. I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought it'd be a little sillier, but it just appeared into view very nicely. No sudden pops of buildings or anything. So this is a must-have airport. It's free. It's photorealistic. It's better than what Payware used to be. So it's just, it's just amazing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.